We had just gotten horribly stuck in the mud, so bad that we had to be rescued by the Mexican Guardia Nacional. We spent a couple days in the dunes, taking advantage of the fact that it was probably the only time we would ever get to park in sand dunes again. But then when it was time to get ourselves back out... So this is where we left off. Okay, so here's the deal. When the National Guard pulled us out, the only way they could pull us out was forward, which meant we had to come into this space where we've been parked for a few days. It's been amazing. But now to get out of here, we have to go back through either the same place that we came through and we got stuck or another spot, which doesn't look much better. So get ready for possibly episode number two in the Getting Stuck Saga. We'll show you how it goes and hopefully we make it through with no problems. We had to get through here, which looked solid enough, but so did this spot, which is where this happened. But unfortunately, we didn't even make it that far. All right, so we got stuck again. We knew there was a chance for this to happen, but the only way to get out of the, the place we got stuck the first time was coming in into the sand dunes. And we're actually glad that that happened because we got to spend a couple of awesome nights over here and we got amazing footage. But now on the way out, we got stuck. And this time we got stuck in sand. We didn't even get to the part where we're supposed to like get through the thing that we came through before. Just trying to get away from where we are now, this is what happened. map again. Still serving its only purpose in the trip so far. We just found a lot of a lot of people that are around here in the sand dunes. They were just like uh, walking around and they're gonna come and help us. There's like 10 of them so we're gonna try to see if they can push us out because we just need a little push, so I hope that with the help of like 10 people pushing it, we might be able to get out, we'll see. So we got it just a little forward, and the front tires were free. But those back tires underneath that heavy recording studio just kept sinking into the sand. We were so grateful for their help that we showered them with the gifts we have to give, music and art. This is the beauty of humanity right here. Helping each other out, 
even when the other is a complete stranger. But we weren't out of the woods just yet. We still had to get through that. walk across something that like it seems so impassable with the bus and it looks so simple but I don't know things that we've thought were so simple turned out to be freaking loose sand man We were free! Free to head on to our next stop, which was just on the other side of town, but it was a spot we didn't want to miss. We even filmed part of a certain music video here. As the sun began to set one night, we noticed fishermen bringing their boats in, laden with the day's catch. All right, so we just got a big fish. Look at this. Look at this big fish. So I just clean it right now, and it's so much food. The bones and parts like this, I'm gonna make it in soup. I'm gonna have to freeze half of the pieces of meat that has bone for later because it's gonna be way too much soup just for Cora and I. So it was $20 for all of this, which is amazing. I didn't even have to bargain because I think it's a pretty good deal. And it's good, you know, to support the local economy. Are we there yet? You're almost there. Check this out. This is gonna be for soup. This is gonna be for soup. Soup. Soup and for more soup. So with all of this, we can make two big pots of soup, which will be enough to eat three or four times. And then we got these two huge fillets. Look at this. So for 20 bucks, I mean, we're gonna eat it for about a week. <laughs> I'm so, so excited to start cooking soup for tonight. It's kind of chilly, so it's gonna be good. And this soup is gonna be Nicaraguan style, which means that it has some milk in it. It's really delicious. So these are the fillets that, that we're gonna fry. Turn it into tacos. Maybe some of them I'll bread it and deep fry it. We'll see. All this is gonna be going to the freezer in separate bags, so I don't have to throw it out all at once. So oh much fish, oh my gosh. Look at all the food. Mm. All right, it's time to make some room in the freezer for this. Fish in here, Good fish right here. The rest of the fish is gonna go here for soup. Yum. 
The next day we woke early. It was the day that we would experience not just one of the most memorable moments of Baja, but one of the most memorable moments of our entire lives. That was one of the most amazing experiences of our entire lives. To this day, we are still pinching ourselves that that ever happened. Then the tour took us to see something else pretty incredible. Guerrero Negro is home to the world's largest salt factory. These giant mountains of salt are produced here and then shipped out to the world. This is all salt. Mountain of salt. Amazing. Mm, salty. The salt, it's produced here from seawater pumped into giant evaporation pools stretching over miles. Another surreal landscape we couldn't believe we got the opportunity to experience.
By this point, we were enchanted with Baja, and we wanted to see more. So off we went towards Muleje. It was a long way, so we decided to stop over in the town of San Ignacio. Once again, Baja was about to blow us away. After days driving through the desert, do you know how crazy it is to round a curve and suddenly find yourself surrounded by lush palm trees and a lake of fresh water? It's quite a trip. Our time in San Ignacio was brief, but it carried with it another unique experience. Hey, so we are here in San Ignacio and we are gonna go on a little kayaking adventure. Yeah, we are at this beautiful oasis and we got some kayaks, so look at this. You ready for the kayak adventure, Cora? Betcha. So this is where we're going? Uh, it's about a kilometer long, a little less than a mile. So we'll see how far we can get. So this is the oasis near San Ignacio. When the drone makes that sound, it means the battery is about to die. Why don't you bring it over to me? I can do it. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the wind is too, too, too crazy right now. To say this was a little stressful is an understatement. That's some cool suspense there. My heart was like, pum, pum, pum. Especially because you could hear the beep, 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 meaning the battery's low. But was it worth the stress? You bet it was. We just got back from this amazing kayak tour. Cora is coming in right now. What do you think, Cora? How do you like it? Oh, pretty out there. Amazeballs. We get to see the sunset from the spring. And we're gonna get to see Cora fall off the kayak. <laughs> no falling. It's the first rule of art we there yet. No falling off anything. Wherever we are, we always have work to do. But here in San Ignacio, man, what an office space. We could have stayed in San Ignacio forever as well. But once again, no internet. So it was onwards to Muleje. Just like that, we were back in the hot, dry desert. 
In Guerrero Negro, we had been on the Pacific side of Baja. Now we were heading back to the Sea of Cortez. Muleje. In Muleje, we witnessed the forming of a brief and beautiful bond. Aquí estamos. I like this spontaneous kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So we are on a boat. We're on a boat. Whoever thought this morning when we woke up we'd be on a boat, <laughs> especially yeah, on a boat. No life jackets. No life jackets. In Muleje, we met Dominic and Nino. You would think they were brothers, but they had just met and became brothers fast. Dom is from Germany and was traveling Mexico by bicycle. Nino is from Mexico City, traveling Mexico by motorbike. They in turn had bonded with Janice from Canada, traveling Baja in her van. When it was time for Dominic to head off on his own, we all went together to see him off. It was so beautiful to see how they bonded so warmly. The family you make on the road. And Janice, what an inspiring person. A free spirit, kind, intuitive, and so much fun. I'm filming, just so you know. Yeah, just like, you know, it's kind of like half that for you, like. Right, so instead of stepping out, you start Exactly, yeah. Do you want to try it? <laughs> now, any video about Baja would be remiss without showing the beauty that is the oasis of Mulaje.
By this point, it became pretty clear we were going to see the whole peninsula. In fact, it worked out that we had a community mural project in the works, with the possibility for maybe even a second one. So with joy in our hearts, we pushed onwards into what is arguably one of the most stunning areas of the entire peninsula, Bahia Concepcion. Next time on Aren't We There Yet? Playa Santispac. Playa Requeson. Murals. Music. Friends. Breakdowns. And then more breakdowns. All coming next in our Most Memorable Moments of Baja, Part 3. Hey guys! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind-the-scenes view of the Art We There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon!